Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Joan with my co-host, Caroline Rena. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hope, every, hope you're doing well. Welcome Hi, to the City Matters <laughs> Live. So today, we were talking about thought distortions. Thought, those pesky thought distortions. I was say, and what are those, Danica? <laughs> well, sabotaging thoughts. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we wanted to share with you is not only how to identify sabotaging thoughts, but what causes the, the sabotaging thoughts and how do we break free from these sabotaging thoughts? Mm -hmm. So here's a th sab sabotaging thoughts. Thought, I'm a failure or, you know, nobody likes me or I'll never get my kids back. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not good enough is the, like the biggest one that most people have. Yeah, like um, what other sabotaging thoughts can we have? I'm I'll never get anywhere in my life. I hate myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, I'm a terrible mother. Mm -hmm. I'm a terrible father. Um, try. Yeah, it's never gonna. It's never gonna work out for me. My whole life is is a is a mess. My whole life is worthless. My whole life is. Just sucks. Sabotage. Sabotage. Yeah, they do I that. that. Little voice in my head. The little <laughs> little voice in my head that's uh -huh. the show and trying to tell, trying to beat me up every single day. If you notice that voice in your head never says, "Oh wow, Danica, you are just the greatest, and you're this, and you're that, and you know, and." Uh, anything positive, <laughs> your, yes. voice in your, head, your voice in your head is saying, oh my God, you're so fat. Why what the hell are you doing wrong now? That's my favorite one. What are you doing? You know better than that. Ugh. I love it when you're like, when you're in a, in a social setting and, and you, I have these little, I make these little funny little sarcasm or little kind of weird comments that I think are funny in my head and then they come out and people look at me and then of course that little voice in my head is running the show and saying yeah. oh why did you even say that, that yeah, was so yeah. they'll think you're an idiot yeah you're stupid I know I got that one too sometimes I'll say something and it's funny because like those types of conversations that I have with people I'll say something and then now now what I'll do is I'll be like Okay, are they busy thinking of something in their head or did they really have an opinion of what I said? Because sometimes I'll make a, I'll even make a joke and it's, it is funny, right? And they'll sit there blank, total, um, what is it, a, a poker face. And I'm like, what the heck just, no, no, it's their stuff. Because <laughs> I can't, I, I'm learning how not to do that. So, but there's, it's still very challenging. With the I voice. do it in the middle of the night. That's when my sabotaging thoughts come up and and I replay a conversation or a situation that happened that day mm -hmm. or maybe even not that day um, maybe something from my past that um, an interaction with my children or my ex or whatever in the middle of the night I'm sitting there like playing it like it's a recording it's a loop mm -hmm. I call it rumination, rumination. My head's oh. ruminating again. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because these thoughts actually um, start out as our, anything that our parents might've said to us, anything that teachers may have said to us as children, this is all as children, um, anything that, you know, your peers would have said or whatever. And then you start to believe in your head what they're saying. And then at some point, those thoughts stop being their voice mostly and they become your voice our voices and we become our worst enemy enemies as far as sabotage that's a self-sabotage we hear those voices so much we start to believe that and it's similar to um you know domestic violence it's similar to how emotional or, or physical or m emotional um uh, violence happens with people when someone says these things to you and start to believe it. You start, they're like, oh, well, you're, you're a terrible mother. I started to believe that, you know? So then my voice goes in my head. Oh my God, I did this wrong. Cause I, and then I gotta be careful about this, you know? Well, so, that if, okay. So if someone else, somebody on the outside says you're a terrible mother, um, 
it would have no impact if there wasn't a little something inside of you that's I'm not a good mother. Oh, a hundred percent. And do you want me to share why? Just so, just to give us an example, I'm, I'm great. I'm okay with this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, you're all right with that? Yep. Okay. So my mother was not a great mother and I never learned how to mother from her because she was traumatized as a child herself. Those were the reasons, but she was still not um, nurturing. Um, there, there was a lot of things like she didn't even know how to raise a child. She was never taught herself. So I never learned anything. So having that thought in my head, and I still have that, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to become my mother, you know, that type of thing, which I know a lot of people think that too. But it, it, it became when I was actually told during my, um, during the time that all this stuff was happening, the parental alienation was happening with my um, kids, I was told that I was not a good mother. And that started building and building and building. And I started feeling like, uh, like I had no way out at that point because I remembered my own mother. And it's like, no, that's not true because I have been a good mother and I was a good mother when I had them, you know, and that type of thing. So that's where the challenge comes in. So th this is where I want to go with is there is that sabotaging thought and maybe it was, did have an accomplice like your mm -hmm. ex or the system or whatever. However, the incident thought is what is we, we point to what was the incident that led to that sabotaging thought of I'm a failure. So, um, you know, it might be something where as far as a bad mother, I might've, you know, been late to pick up the kids from school and they're sitting there. They're the only ones out there and they're just, they're waiting for me. Mm -hmm. So, that of course feeds into the sabotaging mm -hmm. thought i'm not a good mother mm -hmm. the incident was is that i was late to pick up the children and that's it that's all there that's is all. and you could have been late from work yes and that wasn't your fault and there was traffic and there's yeah i, I completely get that so, I, so uh the next step is to to de to determine evidence that supports that sabotaging thought mm write that down, mm -hmm. but then evidence against that thought. So for example, um, what would you have that would be like for or against? So, okay, so for in that situation, um, you know, I, I, you know, stayed at the office five minutes more, and if I had just left work five minutes sooner, Mm -hmm. um, I would have been there on time. Um, so therefore that's evidence I'm bad and wrong. Uh, you know, and you, and you start writing down all the evidence that supports that thought. Mm -hmm. And now it's out of your head because your head is a, is, I call it, your head is a dangerous neighborhood to live in. <laughs> Especially for us. <laughs> so you yeah. got to get that thought out of your head. Yeah. Get it paper and you write down the dip, the evidence that proves that sabotaging thought, or maybe the evidence that proves the, the, the thought, the, the incident thought. And then you look, then you write down the evidence that disproves it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's against that incident thought. Um, like in that situation, what would be the uh, evidence that would be against um, that incident thought or that sabotaging thought? Well, I would think um, for me, it would be, so it was only five minutes, right? And I just had to finish something and that's that part of it, right? And then my kids, as long knowing my kids are fine, they're okay. And so whatever happens between here and there is okay. The world is not going to end. It might look like it, it might feel like it, but it's not going to because of this. And it's like kind of shifting that thought um, to yeah, make it. Is yeah. that? Well, there's certain factors you can't control. Mm -hmm. Control traffic. Um, you can, there are definitely thing, lessons that we can learn and what would we do better next time. However, 
we're dealing with what what we did and what we didn't do mm -hmm. and that's the thing is really accepting what that's, is what isn't yeah acceptance is a huge word and here's the thing just because something like that happened doesn't make us bad people it made us late and late and we, i mean here's the thing we're taught in our society don't you ever make a mistake you're, you're never going to live live down to that mistake. And, and here's the thing in life we make mistakes so when we hear that we start to believe that and we do everything we can not to and it actually causes more anxiety to try not to make the mistake than allowing and accepting it after making the mistake if it is a mistake in, to begin with but we may think that it's a mistake right so that voice in your head is and tell you that. acceptance is of what what is and what isn't mm -hmm. huge and but and as opposed to being a victim of the circumstance um yeah there is traffic that can hold you back um and you can say and but yet you don't have to lean on that being uh the reason because anytime you have some circumstance to to make the incident better in some way or justified or whatever there again you're secretly inside of yourself just again i'm not good enough mm -hmm. i'm not a good mom mm -hmm. i'm you know because a good mom would have would have done this and would have done that and it wouldn't be a victim of circumstance well and here's something else too that's a hundred percent it leads to the fact that in our society especially with moms i can't speak for dads um i know some but um you know we are expected to be the perfect mother and work and um the perfect wife and the perfect da 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 da, da. and some and guess what we're human and sometimes that perfection drops a little bit and because like for myself and i'm not saying everybody is like this i'm saying that at least in my age our age group we've learned that there's another, you know, uh, voice that comes in our head is like, if you're not the perfect mother, if you, and, and you can't do all this stuff, then there's something wrong with you. And then we start to believe that there's something wrong with us. And then, then the mistakes happen, then these things happen, then we get overload. And then we, and then we start, the voice gets louder and louder saying, you're terrible. You're this, you're that. And, and, um, one of the things that I said, <laughs> Danica earlier and I was like, I hope you're okay with it, but I might make some, some people jump. But here's the thing, that voice in your head at this point is your ego or there's other names for it, but you have every right to tell that voice, you ready? To shut the fuck up because yeah. you don't need to listen to that anymore. You need to listen to your heart, not this, your thoughts. We talked about that too. I'll let you, you can say what you did earlier, but your thoughts are the things that cause the emotions to start happening. And then between the thoughts and emotions, then you start ruminating and then you start getting angry or sad and thoughts and anger and sadness or whatever. And all those thoughts in your head are what causes the things or right. our heads, what causes the things that we think to be true and they're not. So. Yeah, your thoughts are, that's the thing is a lot of times people think your thoughts are you. Right, yeah. Um, it's just a thought and um you know that voice in your head that the, it, let me tell you it never says anything positive it's always critical it's assessing it's finding fault if yeah. you and <laughs> um if you recognize that that's not you mm -hmm. because when you when you think of who who am i who am i to to be loved by my children well uh when you start then you start thinking about quality qualities that you that you have that you want people to see of you mm -hmm. so is that who you are or is that negative chatter who you are and i would say that that negative chatter is not you so therefore if it's not you you can tell it to go tell it where to go yeah and and it's what's interesting too is a lot of times um when we start to look at the difference between who we who we really are and who we think we are and who we think we are is not our jobs it's not what somebody tells us it's not our hair it's not our face it's not you know i mean um it's not any of that who we really are underneath everything is love 
And that's like this deep, deep, deep thing. And that's why self-love, they talk about self-love all the time. That deep thing inside of you is who you really are. And that's the part of you that, or us, that we get to rediscover in this lifetime. And it's not about anybody else because once you discover, rediscover that, it changes your relationships with everybody. And, you know, the voices slow down or stop or, you know, or, or you become more powerful and, 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 and you can tell those voices to stop because they're not helpful. They're, they hurt. They literally hurt you as much as you were hurt as a child in circumstances. So, you know, speaking of that, some of the things that help to quiet that voice is meditation and it's become mm -hmm. very, um, mainstream these days. I know when I was a child, that was just, that was not in my world. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I had it in my world. You know, I was raised um, in a church environment where you basically, you pray, 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 pray. Um, and you know what that, when in, what does that look like? That's me talk, 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 talk. And again, I'm putting more of, you know, of that instead of sitting back, being still, you know, training yourself to discipl disciplining yourself to, to turn off the noise. Mm -hmm. Because when you turn off the noise, rarely does God speak audibly, unless, unless it's through somebody else's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be painful too. <laughs> it's not always going to be sweet. <laughs> so I would say, like, I would, I would say that meditation is letting God in mm -hmm. and being one in unity. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, just to help people, because I have still have it every so often, probably more than I'd like monkey mind. So my mind has always been like, kick, 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 kick. And for most people, especially in the Western civilization that we live in this country, um, we can't sit still because we're constantly on the go and constantly doing stuff. And here's the thing. When you go into any kind of a meditation, there's other ways of like, just because you do meditation doesn't mean it has to be transcendental. It doesn't mean it has to, everything goes quiet, everything. And then you start to experience this big, you know, whatever you have to work towards that if that's what you choose. But nine times out of 10, when you meditate, all you have to do is just sit there. And if a, if a thought comes into your head, the, my, my line is, okay, go sit in the corner. I don't want to hear you right now. I'll deal with you later. And then get back to as silent as you can. And another thought's going to come in because our, our brains don't stop thinking. But if you tell it to stop, it's a good practice on, on telling all those things to stop when they start, when it starts doing that talking to you. So that's a, one good, another good uh, um, place to start too. So I was doing, uh, there were, there's several apps out there, meditation apps. There's mm -hmm. the the guided meditation and there's the unguided ones. I like um, some of the music and sometimes I just change it up a little bit. Sometimes yeah. they talk at the beginning and then they go into more of a um, neutral kind of soundscape and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a kind of... That's Insight really Timer. Do you know what Insight Timer is? Yes, I use that. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's one I have. There was this one that was crazy. It was like, um, you see it? The one I, use. <laughs> I like that one the best actually. Yeah. I've done, I've done, um, what do you call it? Um, Deepak Chopra mm -hmm. and he's got something that's in it's where you kind of focus on a particular, um, intention. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's been really, really helpful, but you know what? You just made me this think. This other one that was for like beginners. I felt like it was like, it was that my main one. And yeah. they have cartoons. And there was this one where you basically have a thought and you're playing whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole, thought, 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 thought. That's why you like whack-a-mole. I know, I love whack-a-mole. <laughs> it's in your head now for meditating it. <laughs> I was, I was going to mention too, that's like when you first start meditating, if you light a candle and do a white candle and just stare at the flame the whole time, just set your timer for five or 10 minutes and just stare at the flame. Yeah. And you, you don't have to just, that's what your concentration is on the flame, not the thoughts, not the breathing, not anything else. Just stare at the flame and you'll that's start. Actually, 
when I don't have, when I have trouble sleeping because these thoughts are just, just recurring, churn, churn, churn in the middle mm-hmm. of the night, um, based upon conversations I had in the course of the day and how they could have gone better. There again, that um, <laughs> sabotaging yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll, I will, I'll try to meditate, um, or actually I meditate on, on love, on the word love, mm-hmm. um, love, joy, peace, you know, those happy words. And when I meditate on it, you know, suddenly I don't know, my mind gets bored and I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no more sheep. <laughs> You know, and, and, and just to make people aware of, especially people who are just now starting to get into things like meditation or any kind of um, self-care thing, it's not every one thing works for everybody. You find yours that works for you. And, um, you know, like I can't focus on the word love and stick with it. I love love, but I can't focus on it. So I find, I find other ways like I've talked about. So we all have different ways of doing it. Just research it, go online, see what's on there. You know, try it for a while. If it works, stick with it. If it doesn't, don't do it. Look for something right. else, you know? So I, I think the key thing, the key thing that I want people to take away is um, recognize your, your sabotaging thoughts when they happen and then connect them to the incident that triggered that sabotaging thought and understand it is sabotaging. It's your, that voice in your head that's trying to sabotage who you are and who you see yourself to be. Yeah. The way to, to really get down to it is show me the evidence, show me Mm -hmm. the evidence that proves that, um, that validates that incident thought. And then show me the evidence that disproves that thought. Mm -hmm. And, and um, just to, the other piece of that is that's a, a, an excellent starting place. But eventually, if you keep doing that over and over again, you won't actually have to write it down. You'll start being able to pick up on it. Um, and then when you start, if there's any time that you start going into some kind of a sabotaging thought or what I call inner critic or, you know, that, that mom, dad voice, whatever you want to call it, your ego, um, there's a, there's a split second moment in time where you have the opportunity before get going into a stress response where you can actually observe that thought. And if you let it go too far, you're going to stress out and start getting angry or sad or whatever it is. But if you get in there and observe that thought and then you're like, um, okay, for me, what I do is I say, all right, I'm in a trauma or I'm in a flashback right now. And then just that way you stay here in your, in your frontal cortex, which is your thinking brain, instead of in your stress reaction brain back here. And then you just tell yourself that. And a couple of things you can do is you just you either start breathing, take deep, taking deep breaths, coming back to center, coming back to your body, get out of your head, come back to your body, get out of your head, take the, you know, and do, keep doing that until you feel, <clears throat> excuse me, back in your body. And then one more thing <coughs> that can be done, excuse me, as part of that is you can uh, take a walk. You can go out and take a walk or, um, yeah, I think that was the only other thing. But um, what I also do is want to get back into my body is I do the um, shaking, you know, because it, the most important thing is to get back into your body. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Getting out of your head, out of the thoughts and getting back into your body. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Remind me of a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how, yeah. And, and it's yeah. funny because I have a kid here that I work with with that stuff. It's, you know, when she gets into that thought and she starts ruminating and she thinks she's sad and she's not, and, and I'm trying to get her to, you know, release and get back into her body. I'm like, come on, here we go. <laughs> Yell, you know, whatever you have to do, just get back in your body. <laughs> Yeah. So those thoughts are worthless. That's all I got. That's, that's my bottom line. um, Yeah, we're trying to there. I think moving forward, what we're trying to do is give you some distinctions Mm -hmm. that actually you can put into, into your life. um, And not just sit here for 30 minutes and, um, you know, and just talk because, and I think that's all of our, it's always been our goal, but I think that definitely moving forward, we, if, 
coming up with distinctions that you can that that will actually shift your way of being um then we feel like that we've been of value to you yes absolutely and and um because i don't i'm just giving another word because there's always other words for me the distinctions for me are tools so it's like having a tool putting it in your toolbox when something comes out and and i, I the distinction is to pick the thing that right? Is that right? The distinction is to pick the thing that you need in the moment. So it's the same in my head. It's tool, it's tool and toolbox. So um, yeah. yeah. I use the word distinction because I'm thinking I've got to, there's this thing I have. And if, if you really look at it, you can actually distinguish that it is, it's the color green. It's also equally the color black. And it's, and I distinguish that it's hard and that it's a rock. Um, but before I distinguished it, it just looked like a little blob of something. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with your thoughts and your processes. It, it's, it's um, you know, a child, um, when they get old enough to speak, they haven't distinguished the construction of a sentence and it isn't until later that a teacher breaks it down and says here's how you break down a sentence and now that you've distinguished it you can recognize it anywhere mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's a good explanation i like that so it's not technically the same as tools but that's kind of where yeah it's close yeah. it's close <laughs> So, All right. Yeah, I think we got everything, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for another yeah. City Matters Live. We will see you again next week. Have a great evening and a great weekend. Bye, everyone. <laughs>